it be love indeed. Tell me how much. There is beggary in the love that can be reckoned. I'll set a bone how far to be beloved. Then must thou needs find out new heaven, new earth. and waste the lamps of night in level. You shall find there a man who is the abstract of all faults that all men follow. Most noble Caesar, his faults in him seen are the spots of heaven. More fiery by night breakers, ready day rather than purchased. What he cannot change than what he chooses. You are too indulgent. Worthy Pompey. I shall do well, Manus. The people love me on the sea, my. My powers are crescent, and my augering hope send it to a cup to the foe. Mark Antony in Egypt sits at dinner and will make no war. Seize on the Lepidus in the field, a mighty friend they carry. No, Menas, this pause. I know they are in Rome together looking for Antony. <laughs> お前は今すぐにでもアントニーをローマに呼び戻すなんだっていつでも始まるというのか本兵の艦隊がイタリアに向かっているローマが危ないんだアントニーはシーザーとレピダスに助けを送ると約束がしたんだがそうしておいても知
I must break all oh, this myself in dotage. Well, what was the nature of bad news infects that fellow? When it concerns a fool or a coward, one thing that are past are done with me. Olivia, thy wife is dead. For there. There is a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. What our contempt does often hurl from us, we wish it ours again. She is good being gone. I must from this enchanting queen break off ten thousand harms more than ill. I know my idleness doth hurt. How oh, now, Inobabas? What's your pleasure, sir? I must with haste from hence. Why, then we kill all our women. If they suffer our departure, death is our I world. must be gone. Cleopatra, catching but the least noise of this, dies instantly. I have seen her die twenty times upon far poor moment. She's cunning past <laughs> months old. Alas, sir, no. Her passions are made of nothing but the finest part of pure love. We cannot call her winds and waters, sighs and tears. <laughs> they are greater storms than all Malakas can live for. But I have never seen her. Oh, sir, you have then left unseen a wonderful piece of work. Fulvia is dead. Sir? Fulvia is dead. Fulvia, your wife? Dead. <laughs> oh, I, sir, give the gods a thankful sacrifice. This grief is crowned with consolation. Your old smoke brings forth a new pet coat. And indeed, 
tears raving on onions that you do all the this Then no more light answers. Let our officers have no disworthy purpose. I shall break the cause of our experience to the queen and get her leave to part. Pompey has given the dare to Caesar and command the empire of the sea. Much is breathing. Where is he? I did not see him sin. See where he is, who's with him, what he does. I did not send you. If you find him sad, say I am dancing. If he must, report that I am sudden sick. Quick and return, madam. Methinks if you did love him dearly, you do not hold the method to enforce the like from him. What should I do? I do not. In each thing, give him away. Close him in nothing. Thou teachest like a fool the way to lose him. Tempt him not so too far. But here comes Antony. I am sick and sudden. I am sorry to give breathing to my purpose. Help me away, dear champion. I shall fall. Now, my dearest queen. Pray you, stand farther from me. Most sweet. Nay, pray you, seek no color for you are going, but bid farewell and go. When you should stay, there was a time for worth, no going then. Eternity was in our lips and eyes, bliss in our brows bent. None of our parts so poor, but was a race of he heaven. They are so still, who are thou, the greatest soldier of the world, art turned the greatest liar. How now, lady? I would I had thy inches. Thou shouldst know there were a heart in Dear me. Queen, the strong necessity of time commands our services. <coughs> but my full heart remains in use with you. Pompey makes his approaches to the port of Rome, and more but my particular. That I should that should save my going is Fulvia's death. Can Fulvia die? She is dead, my queen. Look here and read. Oh, most false love. We are with the sacred virus thou shouldst fill with the sorrowful water. Now I see, I see in Fulvia's death how mine received shall oh, be. Oh, no more. But be prepared to know the purposes I bear, which are what these. As you shall give some advice, I go from hence, thy soldier's servant, making peace or woe, as thou affect. Cut my days, Jamian, come! But let it be. Oh, young, quickly, you know, and we are so hard to kneel on. You'll heat my blood no more. Sir, you and I must part, but that's not it. Sir, you and I have loved, but there's not it. Oh, my oblivion is a very Antony, and I am all forgotten. But, sir, forgive me. Your honor calls you hence. Therefore, be deaf to my unpitied folly, and all the gods go with you. Upon your sword sit royal victory, and smooth success be stood before your feet. Let us go. Come. Our separation so abides and flies that thou, residing here, goes yet with me, and I, hence greeting, here remains with thee. Away! <laughs> No curseless 
Grow to the matter. She spoke too well. Welcome to Loam. Thank you. Sit. Sit, sir. Maiden. I learn you take things ill, which are not so. I must be laughed at if I should say myself offended, and with you chiefly the world. My being in Egypt, Caesar, what was it? To I boast to you when rioting in Alexandria. You did pocket up my letters and with taunt this jive my messengers out of Odis. Ah, he fell upon me, I admit it. Then three kings I had newly feasted and did unto what I was in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> One next day I told him of myself, which was as much as to have asked him pardon. Let this fellow be nothing of our strife. <laughs> you have broken the art, Grovia Oath, which you shall never have time to charge me so with. Caesar. No, Lepidus, let him speak. But all Caesar, the article of my own. To lend me arms and aid when I required them, the which you both denied. Neglected, rather, for which myself do so fast pardon, as befits my honor to stoop in such a case. Oh, tis noble, sir. If it might please you to enforce no further agrees between ye, to forget them quite well to remember that the present need speaks to atone you. Well, it is spoken, my sinners. Oh. If you borrow words that are loved, for the instant, you may, when you hear no more words of Pompey, return it again. You shall have time to wrangle in when you have nothing else to do. Thou art a soldier only, speak no more. That truth should be silent. I had almost wrong. You wrong this prince, therefore speak no more. Go to them, your contrary story. I do not like dislike the matter, but the manner of his speech. Yet. If I knew what hoof should hold a stone from age to age of the world, I would pursue it. Give me leave, Caesar. Thou hast a sister by the mother's side of my aunt Octavia. Great Mark Antony is now a widow. Say not so, Agrippa. If Cleopatra heard you, your reproof were well deserved of her. I am not married, Caesar. Let me hear Agrippa father speak. To hold you in perpetual amity, to make you brothers oh. and to meet you. Oh. No, no. Take Anthony Octavia as his wife. Oh. 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 By this marriage, all little jealousies which now seem great, and all great fears which now impose their dangers, would then be. Nothing. Her love to both, who do each to the other, and all loves to both draw after her. Pardon what I have spoken, for this I've studied, not a pleasant thought, by duty, ruining. Will Caesar speak? Not till he hears how Anthony is touched with what he spoke already. Let me have thy hand, father, this act of grace. From this hour, the brothers govern our loves and sway our great designs. There's my hand. Oh. A sister, I bequeath you, whom no brother did ever love so dearly. Let her live to join our kingdoms and our heart, and never fly off our loves again. Happy! Oh. Amen! Of us must Pompey presently be sold, or else he seeks out us. Well, I he. In Sicily. What is his strength? By land great and increasing, but by sea he's an absolute master. And now I do invite you to my sister's view. Let us, let us not lack your company. No, Randri, not sickness should dame me. My honorable friend, Agrippa. We have cause to be glad that matters are so well, this Jesse. You said well by the knee. Aye, sir. We did sleep day out of Kandra and made a night light with drinking. <laughs> Eight, twelve boars. Rosie told at the breakfast. Oh. And the twelve, twelve. there. 
Is this true? This was but other fly, <laughs> my amigo. We had much more Mozart's matter of <laughs> She's the most triumphant lady oh. from Fort B Square. Too. When she first met my country, she passed up his heart upon the river of Sidna. There yeah, she appeared in me. I will tell you. The bar she sat in, like a burnished throne, burned on the water. The poop of beating gold, purple the same, and so perfume that the winds were lousy with them. The oars were silver, silver. with the tune of fruit kept to throw, and made the water with three beaks to follow fast as amorous of the throw. For her own person, it beggared all deception. She did lie in her pavilion, cross of gold of tissue or a picture in the Venus where we see the fancy outward nature. <coughs> On each side her stood the pretty dimpled boys, like smiling cupid, cupid. with divers colored fans whose wind seemed to blow, <coughs> delicate cheeks which they did cool, and what they undid did. Oh, prayer for Anthony. <laughs> ah, gentlemen, like a near did, so many mermaids Tended her in the eye and made her bend adorn it. At the helm, a seeming mermaid's tear. The silicon take swelled the touches of soft flowers, soft hand. <coughs> From the barge, a strange and beautiful perfume hit the sense of a gentle form. The city cast her people out upon her, and Anthony enthroned the market. You sit alone, waiting to dare, which but for vacancy had gone to gaze on Cleopatra too and made a gap in nature. There, yeah, Egyptian. Now, no. Anthony must leave her utterly. Never. He will not. Age cannot wither her, nor custom stay her infinite variety. Other women, Chloe loved as they feel, but she. Makes hungry where most she satisfies. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Anthony, Octavia is a blessed daughter to you. Let us go, good little oh. house. Make yourself fine. I I thank you. Oi, Kita ga Ananda, Anthony ga Octavia to kekkon suru nda. She's a lady, but. Jo, you take from me a great part of myself. Use me well, hint. Sister, prove such a wife as my thoughts make thee. Most noble Anthony, that not this piece of virtue which is set betwixt us. The lamp to better the fortress of it. You shall not find, though you be very curious, the least cause for what you seem to fear. Be cheerful. We will hear part. Farewell, my dearest sister. Fare thee well. The elements be kind to thee, and make thy spirits all of comfort. Fare thee well. My noble brother. Come, sir, come. And I wrestle with you in my strength of love. Look, here I have you. Thus I let you go and give you to the gods. Adieu. Be let happy. Let all the number of the stars give light to thy fair way. Farewell. Yeah, well. The world and my great office will sometimes divide me from your bosom. All which time before the gods my knees shall bow my prayers to them for you. My Octavia, read not my blemishes in the world's report. I have not kept my square, but that to come shall all be done by the rule. Good night, dear lady. Good night, sir.
würden leicht. Klaus Sira, you do wish yourself in Egypt. Would you have never seen Egypt? If you can, your reason. I see it in my motion, but yet. Hi, you to Egypt again. Say to me, whose fortune shall rise higher, Caesar's or my Caesar's? Therefore, O Antony, stay not by his side. Thy demon that thy spirit which keeps thee is noble, courageous, high, unmatchable where Caesar is not. But near him thy angel becomes afraid as being overpowered. Therefore, make space enough between you. Make this no more. To none but thee. If thou dost play with him at any game, thou art sure to lose. And of that natural luck he beats thee against the oath. Thy lustre thickened when he shines by. I say again, thy spirit is all afraid as being all powered. Therefore, make space enough between you. You can't be gone. Be tart, O oh Hup, he has spoken true. I will to Egypt, though I make this marriage for my peace. In the East, my pleasure lies. Why, madam? That I might sleep out this great gap of time. My Antony is away. You think of him too much? Oh, this treason, madam. I trust not so. Thou eunuch, Marian. What's your highness's pleasure? <laughs> not now to hear this thing. I take no pleasure in not an eunuch, husband. It is well for thee that we are seminar. Thy free thoughts may not fly forth of Egypt. Hast thou affections? Yes, gracious mother. Indeed? Not indeed, mother. For I can do nothing but what indeed is honest to be done. Yet have I fierce affections and think what we not be smart. <laughs> Oh, Charmian, where thinkst thou he is now? Stands he, or sits he, or does he walk? Or is he on his horse? Oh, happy horse, to bear the weight of Antony. Do, bra do bravery, horse, for what thou whom thou movest? The demi-atlas of this earth, the arm and bajonet of men. He's speaking now, who are murmuring. Where's my serpent of old night? Oh, so he calls me. Now I feed myself with most delicious poison. Sovereign of Egypt, hail! How much unlike Mark Antony thou art! <laughs> yes, coming, 
that great medicine has been his thing to give it to thee. How goes it with my brave Mark Antony? Last thing he did, dear queen, he kissed the last of many double the kisses this Ori Orient <sighs> Good friend, quoth he, say the firm Roman to great Egypt sends this treasure of an oyster, at whose foot to mend the petty present I will peace her opulent throng with kingdom. All these shall call her mistress. Was he sad? Oh, Mary! Like to the time of dear between the extremes of hot and cold, he was no sad, no merry. Oh, very divided disposition. Note him, note him, good Terry, and he's a man, but note him. He was not sad, for he would shine on those that make their looks by his. He was not merry, which seemed to tell them his remembrance lay in Egypt with his joy. But between both, oh, heavenly mingle! Get me ink and paper. He shall have every day a several greeting. Oh, I am people, Egypt. Give me some music, 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 food of us that trade in love. The music, maybe your own. Let's do Virias. Come, Damian. My arm is to best play with. Medium. As well a woman with an eunuch played, as with a woman. Come, you'll play with me, sir. As well as I can, madam. <laughs> oh, from Italy, from the fruit fruitful tidings in my ears. Madam. Madam. Anthony dead. If thou say so, villain, thou killest thy mistress. But where and free, if thou so yield him, there is gold. And here my bluest veins to kiss, a hand that the kings have ripped, and tremble to kiss him. First, madam, he is well. But still, Mark, we used to say the dead are well. Bring it to that, the gold I give thee, will I melt and pour down thy irritating throat? Madam, he is well. Well said. And friends with Caesar. Thou art an honest man. Caesar and he. A greater friend than never. Make the fortune from me. About yet, man. I do not like but yet. It does not need a good precedence. Fire upon but yet. But yet is as a jailer to bring forth a monstrous malefactor. Pretty friend, pour out the pack of matter to my ear, the good and the bad together. He is friends with Caesar. In state of health, thou sayest, and thou sayest free. Free, madam. No. I made no such report. He is bound unto Octavia. Octavia? I am very charming. Oh. Madam, he's married to Octavia. Oh, what oh, 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 to bring the news. May not the match. Say it is not so. Promise I will give thee and make thy fortunes proud. He's married, madam. Oh, 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 I have made no heart. Good madam, keep yourself with an essence. The mind is innocent. Some innocents escape not the sun of old. Married Egypt into nine unkindly creatures turn on to Call the slave again. Though I am mad, I will not bite him. Call. He is afraid to come. I will not hurt him. These hands do lack nobility, that they strike her meaner than myself, since I myself have given myself the cause. Come hither, sir. Though he to be honest, it is never good to bring bad news. Give to a gracious message and host of tongues, but let ill tidings tell themselves. 
when they be filmed. Most gracious majesty. Is this thou behold Octavia? I great queen. Where? Mother in Rome. I looked high in the face and saw her left between her brother and Mark Antony. Is she as tall as me? She is not man. Did you hear her speak? Is she shrill tongued or low? Madam, she is low voiced. That's not so good. He cannot like her long. Like her? Oh, I think it's impossible. I think so, Charmian. Dad of Tan and Dwarfish. What majesty is in her gain? She creeps her motion and her station at one. She shows her body rather than life. Is this sudden? Oh, I have no observance. Please, but cannot make better note. He is very annoying. I do perceive there is nothing in her yet. The fellow has good judgment. Excellent. He is tired, I prithee. Madam, she was a widow. Widow? Damn your heart. And I do think she is 30. Because her face in mind is long or round. Round, even to forty. Oh, the most sad too. They are foolish that are so. Her hair, what color? Brown, madam. And her forehead, as well as she should wish it. Oh. <laughs> there is gold for thee. Thou must not take my former sharpness in. I will employ thee back again. I find thee most fit for business. Go, make thee ready. Our letter is prepared. Indeed, he is so. Why repent me much that so I hurried him? Why methinks by him this creature's no such nothing, madam? I have one thing more to ask him yet, good Charmian. <laughs> Bring him to me where I will write. All may be well enough. before ascent, which, if thou hast considered, let us know if to entire that is contented sword. To you all three, the senators alone of this great world, you have made me rig my navy, at whose bosom the angered ocean forms, with which I meant to scorn in gratitude that despite to wrong. Cost on my noble father, Take your time. be pleased to tell us how you take the offers. We have sent you. There the point. You have made me offer of Sicily, Sardinia. And I must send measures of wheat to Rome. That's our offer. Now then, I came before you here. A man prepared to take this offer. But Mark Antony put me to some impatience. The best is the least are soft. <laughs> <laughs> my thanks to you, that's called me timelier than my purpose, Hida. Let me have your hand. Well, Matthias, I hope so, let us. Yes. Thus, we are agreed. We'll feast each other. Are we part? Are <laughs> there is no as well? I have a well of life to do, so I perceive full feast at all. <laughs> let me shake thy hand. Aboard my galley, I invite you. Oh! oh. Will you read lots? Show the way, sir. Come! Thy father, Pompey, you do not have made this treaty. You and I have no sir. At sea, I think. We have, sir. You have done well by water. And you by land. We came hither to fight with you. For my part, I am sorry to stand your drinking. <laughs> Pompey does this day laugh away his If he do, sure, he cannot weep back again. You have said, sir. 
We look not for Mark Anthony here. Pray you, is he married to Cleopatra? She loves this time called Octavia, and she's now the wife of Mark Anthony. Pray? It is true. Then is Caesar and he forever knit together? I would not prophesy so. You shall find a band that seems to tie their friendship together will be the very strong love the empty. Octavia is of a holy. <laughs> Not Mark Antony. He will do his Egyptian dish again. Then the shell the size of Octavia blow the fire up in Caesar. And thus it may be. Come, so will you about I have a help for you. I shall take it, sir. We have used our throat in Egypt. <laughs> Come, let's away. お前は何かに来るのか。もちろんだ。レビダスがパラオの見たいからね。彼は世界で一番酒に弱いそうだ。思うに力の方でも小さいアントニーを取るね。もう長くは。本当か。相当小さいレビダスは圧倒するだろう
Thou must know, it is not my profit that does real mine honor. Mine honor it. Repent that ere thy tongue has so betrayed thine act. Being done unknown, I should have found it afterwards. Well done, but must condemn it now. Did this done drink? For this I'll never follow thy poor fortunes more. Who seeks and will not take where was this offered shall never find it more. <laughs>
He has done all this and more in Alexandria. He has the man of it. In the marketplace, Cleopatra and his slaves chair in chairs of gold were publicly enthroned. And to her, he gave the first establishment of Egypt, made her the lowest there, Cyprus, Lydia, absolute queen. Let go of me, thus informed. This done already. And the messenger gone, I had told him, let us on the ground too quiet. Hail Caesar! And my lord, hail most dear Caesar! Why have you stolen upon us? You come not like Caesar's sister. The wife of Antony should have an army for an usher. The neighbor of host to tell of her approach, long ere she did appear. But you are come a market maid to Rome, and have prevented the ostentation of all love. But my lord, to come thus was I not constrained, but did it on my free will. My lord, Mark Antony, hearing that you prepared for war, acquainted my grief the year with all. Which soon he granted, being an outsider between his lust and him. Do not him. say so, my lord. I have eyes upon him, and his affairs come to me on the wind. Where is he now? My lord, in Athens. No, my most wronged sister. Cleopatra hath nodded him to her. He has given his empire up to a whore, who now are living his slave in the kings of the earth. I, oh, me, oh. most wretched, that have my heart parted betwixt two friends that does afflict to each other. Cheer your heart, nothing more dear to me. Best of comfort, and ever, ever welcome to us. Welcome, lady. Welcome, dear madam. Each heart you roam does love and pity you. You are abused beyond the mark of thought. I will be even with thee, doubt it not. But why? 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 Thou hast forespoke my being in these walls, and say it is not fit. Where is it? Is it? Why should not we be there in person? <laughs> Your presence need must puzzle Antony. He is already traduced for liberty, and this said in Rome. Your maids manage this war. Think Rome and their tongues rot that speak against us. A charge we bear is a war, and as a president of my kingdom, I will appear therefore a man. Speak not against it. I will not stay behind. Good in us, we will fight with him by sea. Your ships are not well manned. Your mariners are militars, reapers, people, in just by swift impress. In seas and fleet are those that come against Pompey fought. In their ships are heavy. Yours heavy, no display shall fall in. For refusing him at sea, being prepared for land. I see, I see. I have sixty sails, 
Caesar, and I'm bitter. However, fast of shipping will be burned, and with the rest full man. From the head of Actium, beast approaching Caesar. But if we fail, we then can do it at land. How now, worthy soldier? Oh, noble emperor, do not fight by sea. Trust not to rotten pranks. Do you miss out this sword and this my wounds? Let the Egyptians go attack him. We have used to conquer standing on the ass and fighting foot to well, foot. Well, away! By Hercules, I think I am in the right. Soldiers are what? Our leader's red, and we are women's men. and the provinces. The only border at the neck of Egypt in the middle of the fight when vantage like a pair between the field, hoistesses and prize. That I beheld. My mind is thickened and the fight was being ruled the noble ruin of her magic and tree. Craps on the ceiling and like a doting mirror flies after her. I never saw an action of such shame. Experience, manhood, honor, ne'er before did violate so itself. Alas. <coughs> Alas. Had a general been himself, it had gone well. I yet Follow the wounded chance of Antony. Though my reason sit in the wind against me. But I have lost my way forever. 
I have a ship laden with gold. Take that, divide it, fly, and make your peace. This is fly. Oh, I never. I have okay. left myself and have instructed powers to rather show their shoulders. Friend, be gone. I have myself resolved on a course which has no need of you. I follow that high blast to the couple. My baby hair has been muted. For the white reproof, the brown for restless. Friends, be gone. Pray. Look not far. Take the hint which my despair proclaim. Leave me. I pray. Major so for oh, indeed I have lost command. Nay, gentle madam, do him, comfort him. Do more than your queen. Do why what else? Oh, do you know? No, no. See you here, sir. I... <laughs> madam, madam, who oh, is the emperor? Sir, sir, the queen, my lord, the queen. Go to him, madam. Speak to him. He is accorded with very sure than the same. Most noble, sir. Arise! The queen approaches. Our heads decline, and death will seize her. But your comfort makes a rescue. I have offended reputation. A most unnoble serving. Sir, the queen. Where hast thou led me, Egypt? Oh, my lord, my lord, forgive my fearful sins. I little thought you to have followed. Egypt, thou knewst too well. My heart was to thy rudder tied by the string, and thou shouldst pull me after. Oh, my body. Now I must to the young man Caesar send the humble treat. I, with the half of the world, played as I pleased, making a marring fortune. You did know how much of my conquer. Oh, Bunny! Bunny! For not fear, I say. One of them all that is love. And lost. Give me a kiss. Even this repays me. Oh, love. I am full of lead. Some wine within there, and our violence. Fortune knows we scorn her most when most she of us blows. Think and die. Is Antony who he in fault for this? Antony only that would make his will lord of his reason. What though you fled from that great face of all whose several ranges frighted each other? Why should he follow to other shame? No less than not his lost to court your flying traps and leave his navy gazing with peace. A messenger from Caesar. What? No more ceremony. Admit him. My honesty and I begin to swear. The loyalty will help to fool that make our face mere for me. Yet, he that can endure to follow his allegiance, a fallen law, that conquer him, that dearly plays the story. Caesar's will, 
he knows that you embrace not Anthony as you did love, but as you feared him. Oh. The scars upon your honor, therefore, he does pity as constrained blemishes, not as he deserved. He is a god and knows what is most right. Mine honor was not yielded, but conquered merely. To be sure that I will ask Anthony. Shall I say to Caesar what you require of him? It much would please him to hear from me. You have left Anthony. What's thy name? My name is Hidayas. Most kind messenger. Say to great Caesar this. I kiss his conquering hand. Tell him I am prompt to lay my crown at feet and they are to kneel. Tell him I hear the doom of Egypt. Tis your noblest cause, wisdom and fortune combating together. If that the former dare but what it can, no chance may shake it. Give me grace to lay my duty on your hand. Farewell! I show the thunders! What are the fellow? One that but performs the bidding of the priest man and worthiest to have Caesar's command obeyed. Approach there! Are you kite? Now authority melts for me! I am unclean yet! Take his this second whip him! Sweep him! Horsey with the hand of she. What's her name since she was Cleopatra? Whipping fellows, till like a boy you seem cringe and are out for mercy. Take him in! Mark Anthony! Take him away! Being ripped and bring him again. This jack who sees us shall bear us and they run to him. Take him in! To let your fellow be familiar with my play fellow. This king we feel and pride our high hearts. All the time upon the hill of base to outdraw, for I have savage cause. Please, David, sound thee, my lord. Cried he, and begged a pardon. He did that favor. If the private father live, let him repent. Thou hast not made his daughter. Henceforth, the white hand of a lady fever thee. Shake thou to look on it. Get thee back to Caesar. Tell him thy entertainment, look thou say. He makes me angry with him. Hence with thy stripes be gone. Have you done yet? Like how Terry Moon is now eclipsed, and it portends alone the fall of Antony. I must stay his time. To flutter Caesar, would you mingle I with one that tied his points? Not know me yet! Old hearted toward me. Ah, dear, if I be so, from my cold heart let heaven engender hail and poison it in the souls, and the first stone drop in my neck, as it determines so dissolve my life. I am satisfied. Caesar sits down in Alexandria, where I will oppose his fate. Our force by land hath no be held. Our seventh navy too have knit again. Where hast thou been, my heart? Dost thou hear, lady? There is hope in it. That's my brave road. I will be troublesome, heart expressed. And fight maliciously. When it concerns, beat him. Come, good fellow. Let's have one other good night. Call our sub captains, fill our bows once more. 
Let's smoke the midnight bell. It is my birthday. I had thought to have heard it before, but since my lord is Anthony again, we will I will get it too well. Call all his noble captains to my lord. Do so. We'll speak to them. And tonight, I'll force a wine peep through their skulls. Come, good fellow. I will fight at sea and land. Wilt thou fight well? I will strike. Cry. Take all. Well said. Come. Let's land be bounteous at our meals. Give me thy hand. Thou hast right me on the <laughs> So hast thou. And thou. Thou. And thou, you served me well. And kings are be your fellows. What means this? It's one of those odd things which sorrow shoots out of the mind. Thou art honest too. I wish I could be made so many men, and all of you propped up together in an anthem, that I might do you service so good as you have done. Oh, my lord! My good fellows, wait on me tonight, scan not my guns, and make me as much of me as when my empire is your fellow too, and suffered my command. What does he mean? To make his followers weep. Ten midnight. Maybe. It is a period of your duty. But <laughs> you shall not be more. Your if man will shadow. But just tomorrow, you shall another last. <laughs> no, my I look on you as one that takes his leave. My hearty friends, I turn you away, but like a master, married to your good service, stay till then. Tell me tonight two hours. I ask no more. What mean you, sir, to give them this discomfort? Look, they weep for shame. Transform us not to women. <laughs> Now the witch take me if I meant it thus. You take me in two dozen of us. No, my heart. I hope well of tomorrow. Let's take our supper. Come. And drown consolation. A diminution in the captain's brain restored his heart. When the Vara plays on reason, it eats a sword it fights with. <laughs> I will seek some way to leave him. Brother, good night. Tomorrow is a day. You will determine one way. Fare you well. How do you have nothing strange about the street? Nothing. What news? We like to spot the rumor. Good night to you. Well, sir. Good night. Soldiers, have careful watch. And you. Good night. Good night. Here we. And if tomorrow our navy is live, I have an absolute hope our landmen will stand up. This is a brave army and proverbs.
What should this mean? This, the good Hercules, whom Anthony loved, now leaves him. Oh no, masters! Ah, he's not strange! Your master, do you hear? Hold on the noise! Let's see how it's taking you all! Heroes, come, my Yama, heroes! Come, good fellow, put my eye on. If fortune be not ours today, it is because we brave her. Come! Nay, I will help too. <laughs> What's this for? Ah, let me, let me. Thou art the armor of my heart. Cause for this, this. <laughs> I don't know. That's it must be. Well, well. We shall thrive now. Is not this Baku dwell? Very, very. He is a tambaku that shall hear us tall. For thou thumbrest yours, and my queen squire, more tight of this than thou. This bunch. Oh, love. Thou couldst be my woes today. Thou shouldst see a workman in it. Good morrow to thee, welcome. Thou looks like him that knows a warlike charge. A sudden, sir. I thought to be how well the Arifted tree. At the port, expect you. Tis well, blow, lads. This morning, like the street where youth, that means to be of note, begins with times. So, so. Come, give me that. Fare thee well, dame. What are becomes of me? This is a soldier's peace. I leave thee now like a man of steel. You that will fight, follow me close. I'll bring you to it. Adieu. That had this morning you left thee would have still followed thy shield. Who's gone this morning? Huh? One ever near thee, call for in a barbers. He shall not hear thee or from Caesar. What says thou? Sir, in a barbers is with Caesar. Sir, he's a chest and treasure. He has not with you. This in a barbers gone most sad. Go, yours. Send his treasure after. Do it today, no shot. I charge thee, write to him. I will subscribe. Gentle adieus and greetings. 
says that I wish he never find more cause to change a master. Oh, my fortunes have corrupted honest man. This much. I have done ill, of which I do accuse myself, so sorry that I will joy no more. Inobarbus, Antony has after thee sent all thy treasure with his bounty over them. I give it you. Mock not, Inobarbus, I tell you true. Your emperor continues still a joke. I have done ill. I am alone the villain of the earth and feel I am so moved. Oh. Antony, the minor bounty, how would thou have paid my better service? For am I trapped you, thou dost so crown with gold? This blows my heart! Caesar, I shall. The time of universal peace is near. Prove this a prosperous day. The three new worlds shall bear the olive freely. Anthony is going to the field! Oh, charge, Agrippa! Plants those that have reported in the vent that Anthony may seem to spill his fury upon himself. Thank you. 
Salvatiers, what's the consignment for me all? Give me thy hand. To this great fairy, I will command thy acts. Behold this man. He has brought today as if a godly head of mankind. My nightingale, chain my arm neck. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he's in it to watch you. Come to thou smiling from the world, the great snare, uncoat. We have beat them to their beds. Behold this man. Command unto thy, his lips, thy favoring hand. He has brought thee, as if a good in hate of mankind have destroyed in such a shame. <laughs> Oh, 
and false all Egypt, like a right gypsy. She has beguiled me to the very heart of loss. What? Heroes! Heroes! Have! on the horns of the moon with those hand grasp the heaviest club subdue my world itself the witch shall die to the young Roman boy she has sold me and I fall under this plot Cannot keep the body from my heart. Oh, cleave my sides. 
Hearts must be stronger than thy conscience. Crack thy frail case. Abyss, here was the base. The blues pieces go. You have no people for me alive. I will overtake the Cleopat and read for my part. So it must be. For now, all length is torch, since torch is out. I shall stray no farther. See them, and all is done. We are lost! I come, my friend. We are lost! Stay for me. We are soldiers in couch and flowers. We'll hunt in hunt. And without stretching forth, make the ghosts gain. Come, heroes! Yes. What good, my lord? Thou hast sworn, heroes, when the time should come for my command, thou then wouldst kill me. Do it, the time is come. Draw and sword. <laughs> the gods who support me. Shall I do that which all the enemy does, but not? Yaros, thou then would look see you in great Rome, and thy master to pass in shame. I would not see it. Come then. <laughs> Without wounds, I must be cured. Draw thy own sword. Oh, sir, pardon me. Yes. When I make thee flee, swearest thou not then to do this when I bought thee? Do it at once! Go and come! Turn from me, then that noble countenance, wherein the worship of the whole world lies. Lo, thee. My sword is. Draw. Then let it do at once the thing why thou hast drawn it. My dear master, my captain and my emperor. Let me say, before I strike this bloody stroke. We are well. It is well, man, and farewell. We are well, great chief. Shall I strike now? Now, Yaros. Thus, I do escape the sun. Antonius, yes. I see no blood on my soul. <laughs> oh, very dearest, thou teachest me what I should, and thou couldst not. My queen and Eros have by their brave instruction got up on me. A noble in echo. Come then! And Eros, thy captain dies, thy squirrel. The... Thus! I learned Oh, uh, not dead, not dead. The God for this part. Ah, 
young boys and the girls are everywhere now with men. Your teeth are gone. There is nothing left remarkable beneath the visiting. Then, what's brave, what's noble, after the high Roman fashion, and make this proud to take us? Come, hurry. I am called Dastas. Mark Antony I served, who best was worthy best to be served. Whilst he stood up and spoke, he was my master. And I owe my life to spend upon his haters. What is thou sayest? I say, O oh Caesar, Antony is dead. The breaking of so great a thing should make a greater. The round world should have shook lions into civil street, and citizens to their den. The death of Antony is not a single doom. In the name lay a moiety of the world. He is dead, Caesar. Not by public minister of justice, nor by hired knife, but the self hand with which his honor in the act is did. Us spread it the heart. This is his sword. I loved his wound of it, behold it stained with his most noble blood. Look you sad, friends. Thank God believe me. But it is the tidings to wash the eyes of kings. And strange it is that nature must confer us to lament our most possessed deeds. His pain and honors raised equal with him. A real spirit never did steer humanity. Caesar is touched. When the suspicious mirrors set before him, he needs must see himself. Oh, Antony. We could not stall together in the whole world. Let me lament with tears the sovereign of the blood of heart. But thou, my brother, my confidant in top of all design, my mate in empire, friend and companion in the front of war. But our star. How reconcilable should divide the equal to hmm. 
what are you? A poor Egyptian yet. The queen, my mistress, confined in all she has. Her moment of the intense desires, instructions that she may prepare me for the way she is posed. Did her have good heart. She soon shall know of us. How honorable and how kindly we determine for her. For Caesar cannot live to be ungentle. So the gods preserve thee. Come hither, Dorabella. Go and say we purpose her no shame. Give her what comfort the quality of her, her passion shall require. Lest in her greatness, by some mortal stroke, she do defeat us. For her life in Rome would be eternal in our triumph. Go! Caesar, I shall! My desolation does begin to make a better life, and it is great to do that thing that ends all other deeds. She thus sends greeting to the Queen of Egypt, and bids thee study on what fair demands thou meest to have him grant thee. What's thy name? My name is Dora Bella, most noble empress. You have heard of me? I cannot tell. Assure it to me. You know me. No matter, sir, what I have heard or known. You laugh when boys or women tell their dreams. I Do understand, you know? not madam. I dreamt there was an emperor, Anthony. Oh, such another sleep that I might see, but such another man. If it might, freeze him. His face was as the heavens, and there is stuck a sun and moon. Which kept their cause and righted the little low. The most sobbing creature. His legs pissed with the ocean. His reared arm crusted the wall. His voice was property. As all the tunes, the spheres, and that to friends. But when he meant to quail and shake the orb, he was as rattling thunder. For his bounty, there was no winter in it, and autumn was that grew the more by reaping. His delights were dolphin like, they showed his back above the element they lived in. In his rivalry walked the crowns and the crowns, friends and irons, while the plates dropped from his pocket. Hear me, good madam, your loss is as yourself. Great, and I do feel, by the bound of yours, a grief that smites my very heart at you. I thank you, sir. Know you what Caesar means to do with me? I am lost to tell. Nay, pray you, sir. Though he be honored. He lead me then in triumph through the streets of Rome? Madam, he will. I know it. Which is the queen of Egypt? It is the mother. Arise, you shall not kneel. I pray you, rise, rise, Egypt. Sir, the gods will have it thus. My master and my lord, I must obey. Take to you no hard thought. If you apply yourself to our intents, which toward you are most gentle, you shall find a benefit in this change. Yet, if you seek Anthony's cause, you shall believe yourself for my good purposes. I'll take my leave. 
our care and pity is so much upon you that we remain your friend and so adieu my master and my lord not so adieu <laughs> My resolutions praised, and I have nothing of a woman in me. Now, from head to foot, I am marble constant. Now, the fleeting moon, no planet is of mine. This is a man. Avoid and leave you. Hast thou the pretty worm of Nilus there that kills and pains not? Truly, I have him, but I would not be the party that should desire you to touch him. For his biting is immortal. Those that do die of it do seldom or never recover. Remember thou that have the any that have died? I don't. Very many men and women too. I heard of one of them, no longer than yesterday. A very honest woman, but something given to lie, as a woman should not do. But in the way of honesty, how she died of the biting of it, what pain she felt, truly she makes a very good report of the man. Get the hands fair, I wish you all joy of the world. Farewell. You must think this refuse that the world will do his kind. Aye, aye, farewell. Refuse that the worm is not to be trusted, but in keeping wise people. For indeed, there is no goodness in the world. Well, get thee gone, farewell. Aye. Yes, forsooth. I wish you joy of the land. <laughs> Give me my robe, put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Now no more the juice of Egypt's grape shall moist this lip. Yeah, yeah, good Iris, quick. Methinks I hear Antony call. I see him rouse himself to praise my noble act. I hear him mock the luck of Caesar. Husband, I come. Now to that name, my courage prove my title. I am fire and air. My other elements I give to base her life. So have you done? Come then, and take the last words of my lips. They are the time charm. I am love and fear. Oh, 
Thyself art coming to see perform the dreaded act which thou so sought to hinder. Oh, sir, you are too sure and older that you did fear is done. Played up to the last. She leveled up to her purposes, and being loyal, took her own way. The mother of their death, I do not see them bleed, who would last with them. Oh, Caesar, this journey lived but none. She stood on the spade. I found her dreaming, dreaming of the diamond of her dead mystery. Tremblingly, she stood, and on the sudden, drove. Noble weakness. If they have swallowed poison, to the appear by external swelling. She looks like sea, as she would catch another Antony in her strong toil of plants. Here on her breast, there is a vent of blood and something blown. The life is on her This is an aspic trail. And these big leaves have slime on them, such as the aspic leaves upon the caves of night. Most probable, that's so she. For her physician tells me she has pursued conclusions infinite of easy ways to die. She shall be buried by her, Antony. No grave upon the earth shall clip in its fair so famous. How he thinks out these strikes all that make them, and their so their story is no less sympathy than his glory, which brought them to be lamented. 
our army in Solomon shall attend this funeral, and then to go. Come, Brabella, <coughs> see high order in this great solemnity. お忙しい中、そしてまたお寒い中、多数のご来場いただきましてどうもありがとうございました。え、では本日のためにえ、縁の下の力持ちとして絶え間ない努力をしてくれましたスタッフのメンバーを紹介したいと思います。え、まず王
そして舞台裏のでの、えー、ブラ舞台裏での音響効果をやってくださいましたミュージシャンの皆さん。それから発音指導にあたりまして栄卓大学イギリス語学科の先生に非常にお世話になりましたどうもありがとうございましたそれから、えー、僕たちの練習を早朝から夜更けまで、えー、全て見守っていただきましたミスター・バントクありがとうございました。